Open your Bibles with me this morning to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. This is our last message, as far as I can tell, for this season on this chapter. And we're really going to focus on verse 10. But as we read this morning in verse 6 to 10, Paul was encouraged to hear that Timothy had come back with great news. And, but Paul understood they're not done yet. They haven't arrived to the point they need to be there yet in their faith. And that's a testament for each of us. We are constantly growing and should be growing to maturity in Jesus Christ. We should be moving forward, not falling backwards. You either progressing or you're digressing in your faith and your relationship with Jesus Christ. You may know enough, but there's yet so much more revelation, so much, much knowledge, so much, much of the character of God that he wants to reveal to you. And you are the one who sets the limit. You are the one who says, I want to keep going deeper or not. But the option is there. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We ask that you may be exalted and glorified. That you meet us here in this place to worship you, to speak with you. That we may hear your voice clearly this morning as we gather to praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I label this message perfecting faith. Really, verse 9 and 10 is our core verses, specifically 10. Notice what he said, for what things we can render, verse 9, to God for you. For all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God. Night and day, he continues saying, praying exceedingly. I like the phrase, praying exceedingly. Like we're not doing the minimal amount of prayer. How many of you guys, are three, how many of you guys pray three times a day? You know what I'm talking about, right? I don't mean getting on your knees. I mean, we just pray for our meals. Lord, bless this lunch. Amen. No, this is his praying exceedingly. He's invested in praying. Notice what he's praying for them for. He says, night and day, pray exceedingly that we may see your face. We want to see you guys. We'll talk about it in a second why. But also notice that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. Paul had a real concern for these believers in Thessalonica. He was concerned about their faith. And that is a sentiment that you and I need to learn to grow with for one another. That we are concerned for our brothers. Yes, we should be concerned about their physical safety. Are you okay? I have friends that are missionaries in Mexico. We just had lunch with them on Friday. And first question that comes, how's the violence, right? Because we want them to know we care about your safety. But sometimes we care more about their comfort and ease than what we comfort about their care about their comfort. Sorry, than what we care about concerning their faith, building them up in the persevering of the faith. Because as you know, trials do come. Listen, and we need to be watching out for one another. We need to be honest enough to care for one another and say, How are you doing today? I haven't seen you. Are you doing okay? How's your walk with Jesus? Because let me tell you, the enemy is constantly pounding on them. The enemy is constantly telling them what a failure they are. How do I know? How do you know? Because we're all tested the same way. We're all tried the same way. We're attacked, all of us, the same way. We always hear the, the never-ending accusation, you do not do enough for Jesus Christ. You do not pray enough. You know what? The devil used to say that to me when I would pray five minutes a day. He still says that to me when I pray an hour a day. You don't pray enough. You're never going to pray enough until we get to heaven. That's reality. Our hearts long to go to heaven. Our hearts long to be in his presence. But the enemy comes and pounds on you. You don't read enough. May it be that you read five minutes or two hours. You're still going to hear that accusation. Bless you. And you need to have a team behind you that cares and that loves you and that reminds you, press on. Don't get discouraged. Press on. Look at where you've been. Look at where you are. And look at where you are going. We're going home. Don't be discouraged. Paul was concerned about his faith. Verse 2 tells us why. Because he says in, he said in team, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone. 
And send Timothy, our brother and minister of God, a servant of God. That's all he means. Are you a minister of God? Are you serving Jesus Christ today? Raise your hand. You are a minister of God. You represent the Lord. Notice that it says, in our fellow labor in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to encourage you concerning your faith. Paul tells us of how he was so concerned for the people, for this congregation in Thessalonica. He could no longer handle it, so he sent Timothy back to them from Athens in order that he may establish and comfort them in their faith. Listen, you and I need to understand this. We need to be established in the faith. We need to be coming, come to the point where we are immovable, where the world can no longer change your mind. I said it before and I say it again. If somebody had to convince you, if they had to argue into the kingdom of heaven, guess what's going to happen? Somebody's going to come and argue, argue you out of the kingdom of heaven. But when you have experience and come to the realization that what God declares is truth, then we must learn to stand on it regardless of the thousands of voices we are hearing against you. To say, it doesn't matter what you say or what you think because I have God's confirmation through his word given to us in scripture and you cannot longer move my feet. We need to be established in the faith. Look at the person next to them and to you and tell them, you need to be established in the faith. Now say it back to them, you got to be established in the faith. We need to have our firm, for surely footed in the faith because if we are established in the faith, you know the word rooted means? Think about it. I, I, like I said before, I learned English through osmosis. So like as I counter it, I guess that takes the meaning. The word rooted means to have deep roots. <laughs> Do you know that? <laughs> so that when a storm or something happens, comes, the tree doesn't move. When we say to somebody, I am rooting for you, it is the same word. Isn't that weird? I am helping you grow the roots, I guess. Do it. You got it. That is the same word. I am rooting for you. I'm hoping that you grow deep roots in Christ Jesus, Colossians says, into his heart. We need to be established because if we are established in the faith, we'll be comforted in any and all adverse circumstances that you face. Now, I know that most of you guys walk on water the rest of the week. I know that most of you guys walk in cloud nine and nothing affects you. But let's be honest, how many of you sinners like me had a rough week? Do you have a rough week? It's like my, my, my dog knows the answer. How was your week? I knows rough, he says. <laughs> He's a handsome dog, you're very smart. Listen. That is just reality. And you're going to face adversity in your day-to-day -day walk. But we need to be rooted. The Thessalonians, when Paul left them, they were just babies in the faith. They had only been born again, less than three weeks old. What can you trust a three-week-old baby to do? Absolutely nothing. Eat and poop. That's all they do. But they need help for that too. Somebody must feed them. And Paul is concerned because at three weeks old... Paul was persecuted and pushed out of the town. He, the persecution had become so intense that he had to escape to the city, the city in order to avoid being arrested again. Paul was concerned. He was afraid that these little believers being so new in the faith, they may be discouraged and give up because of the opposition, because of the trials that they were going to face. He had to leave before he had truly grounded and established them in the faith. So Paul reminded them in advance that he had told them that tribulations would come. That is a message that I always encourage you with. Trials and tribulations are the normal part of a Christian walk. Paul understood it from the very beginning. From the time he was saved, Paul declared to them that he was himself appointed unto tribulation. It was in Acts chapter 9. Remember Paul's story of salvation. There he was, 
persecuting the Christians. The early church, he gets the letters to go to Damascus and arrest and put to prison any believer he comes across. As he's going with his caravan, going through the road of Damascus, heading towards Damascus, a bright light from above shines. But it's so bright that Paul falls down from whatever he was writing. And the word of the Lord met him and said, Paul, Saul, Saul, his name before salvation, his BC name, why are you Persecuting me. I love that. That phrase is so beautiful to me. Because this reminds us that when people are persecuting you. Jesus says, oh, I think it personally. They're my people. They're my sheep. Why are you persecuting me? Lord, who are you? He says, I am Jesus. Then somebody takes him all the way to the straight street in Damascus. There was only one apparently. Which, where is he at in the straight street? That one, that's where he's hiding in one of those houses. And the Lord calls Ananias, a servant of the Lord, to go and pray for Saul that he might receive his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. But what did Ananias say? Do you have an idea, Lord, what you're asking me to do? This guy's a murderer. This guy's is wasting away your church, your people. And the Lord answered to Ananias and said, He is my chosen vessel. And I shall show him, notice, all the things that he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul knew in advance that the preaching of the gospel was not going to be easy for him. It will bring persecution, suffering, and tribulation. So what did he do? He counts the cost. He counts the cost. The beautiful saving grace and forgiveness that he founds in Christ Jesus. That he says, it is worth it to suffer. It is worth it to go through trials because of the calling that God has put upon my life. It is worth it to preach the name of Jesus.